Hello and welcome to your own personal brand spanking new, bright and shiny, it's all miney video, the very best of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Over the next 90 minutes, we're going to relive some of the drama and the emotion that has made Who Wants to Be a Millionaire the most successful quiz show the world has ever seen. And there have been a lot of those great moments since we first came on air back in September 1998. Now, after all, it's the TV programme that got strangers talking to each other again. Emptied pubs that didn't have TVs in them and filled pubs that did. You're going to see people winning fortunes, people losing fortunes and me losing about 20 years of my life. But before we see some of those highlights, first let's give you an exclusive look behind the scenes. Now, I bet you've often wondered what it takes to make this little programme. Well, now you can find out as we look at a day in the life of who wants to be a millionaire. Elstree Film Studios, just outside London. I'm going to be a professional game show contestant. 9am, <laughs> the contestants begin to arrive for the start of a long but exciting day. I'm Jess, one of the researchers. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. First thing is a quick wardrobe check. OK, Karen, before you show us what the baby's going to wear, would you like to uh, show us what you'd like to wear? Yeah. Hold your outfit up on the hanger so cameras and lighting can have a look at these colours next to your face. Grey trousers, maybe? That's fine, that's fine. But if, if they say that that is too shiny, then yeah. you'll be all right with that one. Yeah. yeah. Jenny, hello. Now, the next thing is to find out a bit about these people. So when you two are watching the television and watching Millionaire together, um, who tends to do better? I'm not very good. I've actually got two grandchildren. Yeah. One's ten and one's eight. I'd like to go down Snowden in my wheelchair. Yeah. Hopefully with some nice young men hanging onto the oh, wheelchair that's... for me. <laughs> Friends have to be phoned to make sure they're going to be in if their big moment arrives. Well, one's engaged and the other's answering machine, so... <laughs> or at least they're going to be in. It's not at his desk. They're going to try and find it. Hi, Uncle Ian. Hi, can I just tell you the rules for tonight's show? Yeah, it's Jenny Lumley. Keep your phone line free between 7 and 10 p.m. this evening. Um, you mustn't make any outgoing calls and mustn't try to take any incoming calls either. <laughs> Turn off the TV or radio before you pick up the phone. No, I'll have to ring him a bit later. Also, the first person you'll speak to is Chris Tarrant. Throughout the day, all kinds of odd people arrive at the studio for various reasons. Okay, cheers. But obviously our ten contestants. It's briefing time for the contestants. And as soon as we've established who's next to play for the million pounds, we'll then stop recording, make sure everyone's all right, offer you glasses of water, so don't think we are literally recording for two hours solid. We do have lots of these pauses. Early afternoon, and the contestants get their first look at the studio. Right, good afternoon, everybody. A quick look at the clothes on camera. Certain to butter. To make sure that nobody looks like a tutti fruity ice cream or a zebra crossing. Yeah, all done. Everybody fine. Yeah, cool. The contestants then get a chance to try the game, beginning with Fastest Finger First. In Fastest Finger First, for the first part of it, you don't need to look anywhere else in the studio apart from your screens. Now, audience, for this bit, keep it nice and quiet, please. Let them concentrate. It's Fastest Finger First. Here comes the question. Starting with the smallest, Put these four sports in order by the size of the ball used. 20 seconds. Golf, association football, tennis. Eight of you got it right, who was fastest? Jane Andrews! Jane, you're an amazing... I then play a couple of rounds with each contestant so that we can get to know each other a bit before the show. Audience, audience has never been wrong in rehearsal, have they? In 200, nearly 200 shows. <laughs> Once you get to 1,000, take your time, get your head together and really have a good look. In which part of London was the good life set? Pearly, East Cheam, Perry Vale, Surbiton. You can ask the audience, you can phone a friend, and use 50 50. I might go 50 50 though. We have to get to a point sooner or later where you say, yes, my final answer is. It's the right answer, you got a thousand pounds! <laughs> you are! Okay, go. Just before showtime, I'm briefed on the contestants, their stories, and their dreams. Up in the audience is daughter Vicky and watching at home is husband John, also known as Lumpy, a nickname he hates. She loves travelling but John doesn't. She's also been on TV before, at Buckingham Palace, where she was videoed receiving an MBE from Her Majesty the Queen. Really? Yeah, because she's a retired civil servant and she was in the DHSS for 35 years. Now one of her phone of friends is actually a guy she's never ever met. She met him on an online quiz chat room, so he's going to be one of her phone of friends. So you're not quite useful. Yeah. It's nearly time. The audience arrive. 
The boys in the computer room stack the questions for the show. Wombat, badger, shrew or buffalo? Well, I think that's alright for £100. Yes, fine. Uh, just go back three. We didn't have another geography question. Huh? Good, OK. Next. Which of these songs is traditionally performed the last night of the proms? My Way, Rocking All Over the World, Rule Britannia or the Birdie Song? A final touch-up for the contestants. The whole day's gone so fast because we arrived this morning um, at about 11 o'clock. 7.15, into the arena. 7.30, and here we go.